Okay, so here we're going to prove the reciprocal rule for derivatives, which says that the derivative of the reciprocal of a function, say f of x, like 1 over f of x, and then take the derivative of that, is equal to negative times the derivative of f divided by the function f of x squared. Okay, so we're going to prove this using the limit definition for derivatives. And so how do we do this? Well, the derivative of 1 over f of x is equal to the limit as h approaches 0 of the function, right? This is our function that we're taking the derivative of, evaluated at x plus h. And so in other words, it's 1 over f of x plus h. Like plug in x plus h in for x, right? That's f of, or the function evaluated at, at x plus h minus the original function, right, 1 over f of x, all over h. And so, of course, right here, we can't just plug in h equals 0, because you're going to get 0 over 0. But we can manip use algebra to kind of manipulate this fraction in order to make a limit so that we can evaluate it and end up with our uh, what we want, right? The negative times the derivative of f divided by f of x squared. So here we go. What we want to do is multiply in both numerator and denominator by f of x and f of x plus h. We're doing this because we want to cancel out both of these deno denominators, right? The denominators in the numerator, right? f of x plus h and f of x here. So when we multiply both the numerator and denominator by f of x and f of x plus h, the denominator down here, you can see just simple multiplication, not, nothing fancy there. But in the numerator, right, when we multiply by both of these things, it's to apply to both terms, right? Distributes it to both terms. And so in the first term, f of x plus h will cancel out with the denominator, but f of x will not. It'll just multiply by that 1, and it'll just be f of x. Opposite thing will happen here, right? f of x will cancel out in the denominator, but f of x plus h will not. So it'll stay there, multiply by that 1. And so in the numerator, we have f of x minus f of x plus h. And you'll notice that's the opposite of the numerator of the derivative of f, right? Derivative of f is f of x plus h minus f of x. It's the other way around. And remember, in our final answer, we want to end up with the derivative of f. And notice also, we have this h in the denominator. So maybe if we kind of flipped it around, right, factored out a negative sign. So we flipped the order, right, and factored out a negative from the numerator. We have f of x minus f x plus h, sorry, minus f of x all over h. Hmm, this is, this is the derivative of f. And so that's exactly what we're going to do. Factor out the negative, and then we're going to use the product rule for limits, right? We're going to split this up. Take what we want, f of x plus h minus f of x, and that h in the denominator, bring it to the left, right? Or we'll bring it to one side. So that's the derivative of f. And what, what's left over? In the numerator, we have negative 1, right? And the denominator, we have f of x and f of x plus h. So right, all I did was I split up the multiplication, right? If you multiplied these two fractions together, you would indeed get back this answer here. And now we can use the product rule for limits, right? We have the, the product of two further things. So we can say it's equal to the limit of each thing individually. So in other words, it's the limit as h equals 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x over h. Notice, hey, that's the derivative of f by definition. And over here, we have limit as h approaches 0 of negative 1 over f of x times f of x plus h. So again, on the left here, we have the derivative of f, which is what we wanted, right? We want, in our final answer, we're going to need a derivative of f coming here. And what's this on the right? What is this limit here? Well, here, we, we, there's no reason we can't just plug in h equals 0. And so when we do that, we get f of x times f of x plus 0. In other words, f of x again. So in other words, that's f of x squared. And you can see how things are shaping up pretty nicely because we have this negative 1 in the numerator. And so now, again, the, the product here we have, we split it up into two things. So it's the product of these two limits. And so it's f, of f prime of x, the derivative of f, times negative 1 over f of x squared. And so that gives us negative f prime of x over f of x squared, which is what we wanted as our final answer. And so that is our proof. And so you can see how what we did here, right? We got rid of some denominators. And then we noticed that this is the opposite of what we want, right? We wanted the other way around to flip the sign. So we factored out a negative, and we used the product rule for limits, and then we just evaluated each limit, and that gave us our final answer.